Good d -d 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 morning, gang. It's Tuesday, it is the 2nd of January, and this is where it all starts. So, I'm feeling a little bit groggy, probably still the remnants of a hangover from New Year's Eve. Um, and I've woken up which can, with which can only be described as um, what I believe is probably a broken back. Um, I suffer with bad backs anyway, or a bad back, I haven't got two. Um, particularly bad at the minute and it's really really painful to the point where like it makes you want to cry uh, it's the only way I can describe it is it's like a unrelenting pain can't bend over can't get out of a chair like everything it just hurts it's like this numb like dull ache in the bottom of my back and it's really frustrating because I want to get going to the gym I want to get start getting the fitness going and it's really frustrating. So I need, I personally believe that drinking has a big part to play because since I've not trained as much over the Christmas period, gym wise, and I've drunk a lot more than I normally would, it's been progressively getting worse and it's like inflamed. And I think the booze inflames everything, doesn't it? You can tell from my inflamed face. So we are starting a challenge. My wife and I are going to do this together. We have adapted 75 hard. And the reason we've adapted it is because we want it, yes, to be hard, but we also want it to be something that we don't just drop after it's finished. We want a lot of it to be able to be continued and consistent so that we can continue with it rather than this big, crazy challenge followed by gluttonous old behavior. So I've done 75 hard before. If you don't know what 75 hard is, check it out. Um, I'll get them to put an image here. Um, it is essentially where you have to train twice a day. One of those training being outside. You have to drink a gallon of water. You have to read a book. You have to not eat any junk food or stick to a diet is, is what they say. Um, no booze. No takeaways, etc. So what we've done is we've adapted ours. We're going to do a 60 day. That's two months. So we're going to do 60 days. I was only going to do 30. And my missus was like, well, it's not really a challenge to do a month. So we're going to do 60 days. No booze. That's a challenge in itself. Number two, a gallon of water. Number three, we're going to train in the gym once a day. Minimum. That can also be... A stretch. So what we what we're considering doing, um, and I think we confirmed that. I can't remember. Is two days working out, one day stretch. Two days working out, one day stretch. So that's like, again, working out every day is potentially not going to be good for you long term. You need rest days. So the rest day will be a stretch day. There'll still be gym work. It might be yoga. It might be Pilates or something stretch work but just not like heavy lifting something to give you um a bit of a rest we are gonna do a walk or a run or a cycle as well as that it's really important especially when you're working in an office or whatever i tend to just be sat here um need to make sure that i'm getting out if i've got calls get out if i'm going to the gym cycle Anywhere nearby, cycle so that you're getting your activity up. You're doing what you're going to be doing anyway, but you're just adding a bit of activity in there. It's like they say about taking the stairs rather than the lift. Just increase your... What's it called? I don't know. Basically, your normal daily movement. If you increase that, then it will make a huge, huge difference. So I'm so excited. I'm fed up with being tired feeling swollen, I'm done with being hungover, fucking hell, I'm done with being hungover, um, so yeah, I'm excited, really excited for this challenge, I know how good I'm going to feel, I'm half tempted to quit coffee, but I don't want to do the whole new year's, let's just change everything in our lives and then quit after a few days, um, I love coffee, I've got some new nootropic mushroom powder that's really good for focus, but that's got caffeine in it as well, and I don't want to double up, so I'll have to decide what, what days. Um, so today I am, 
updating all the slides, ready for the training that is on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. Holy shit. I also have a new car arriving on Wednesday. Um, also exciting. So we've got the training at 8 o'clock tomorrow. I'm updating all the slides. I'm just getting some information. Because what I really want to do is make sure, as I said to you last week's, make sure that my sale is good. Not because I need to make loads of money from this. It's nice. But the whole program isn't about making money for us from the program. The whole, pro the whole program is built around selling more deals and housing more people. Money comes with that. Amazing. Um, but I want people to be aware of the opportunity that they have in front of them. I didn't make them aware of that. I glossed past the sale and told them how much it was. And that's why it didn't sell. They didn't know that there'd be a 21-day social media, short-form short form social media challenge run by Harvey, who has 100,000 followers, who has repeated that process with other people to get them up to a load of followers. 21-day challenge, he normally charges 489 quid or something like that. They're going to get it for free in our program. They're also going to get the sales trainer, which costs about 100 quid a month or something like that. So £1,200 value that they're going to get. So at the moment, we're at not a million miles off for two grand. Then you've got our actual program with six weeks of having me there to support you, handhold you. And then we're going to give a free one two-day in-person event that is normally charged out at a grand. There's easily six, seven or eight grand's worth of value and we're going to sell it out at 499 pounds. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And they can cancel any time up to two weeks into the program so there's also no risk if they buy on the night and then change their mind they can do that so it should be a much better sale when i do it i always say that and then it comes down to it and i shit myself rush through the sale and then no one buys but um that's going to be a big improvement for me in my life is that we've got a sales trainer now and i'm going into like helping the others sell deals but i need to sell i need to sell better i need to improve so that's exciting. Um, a lot, a lot of exciting stuff. This year is going to be great. We had a bit, a big, big, big load of bumps last year. Um, some of which need to be dealt with today and hopefully draw a line under. Um, and then that's it. Get active, get more energy, get my back feeling better. Be more present around my family and friends. That's one thing. Get rid of this phone. <laughs> I'm uh, working on with the team outsourcing all of my social media. I don't want social media apps on my phone. They will be on an iPad if I need them or on the um, or on the laptop. But I don't want it on my phone anymore. I'm done with being notified or every time my phone buzzes running to my phone, regardless of when my wife's trying to have a conversation with me or my kids. It's just constant. And it is the excitement of having money coming through and like exciting stuff on your phone but more often than not it's just like someone's commented on something and then you end up scrolling for an hour after that it's just i'm really bored of it um so big start to this year and then in the third month we're going skiing twice one with daniel Priestley, my hero and the other one is my own trip which will be really good fun loads of exciting stuff happening this year so i've just got to make sure that i'm the best version of myself to enjoy it, receive it, understand it. I'm excited. Happy Wednesday, gang. Gym two done with the PT. Uh, rest day tomorrow, so we'll be stretching and doing some, maybe some yoga um, to try and relieve my back. But two days in the gym, two days not drinking, my back is basically fine. Like, it's not strong, but it's not hurting me, nor are my legs. It's mental, absolutely mental. Um, yesterday I went to the gym, came out, back just didn't hurt anymore. Crazy. Um, so, car was meant, I'm gonna have to speak quietly because she sounds this. I still haven't told her. Meant to arrive today, but it was meant to arrive Boxing Day. They didn't said, due to Christmas, there's been delays, fine. Then it was booked in for today. I've been so excited. 
And then he was like, you'll get a message at nine o'clock in the morning. Okay, cool. No message, so I ring. I'm just about to call him, let me find out. I'll be back to you in 45 minutes. 45 minutes later, well, I went to the gym, gave him an hour, hour and a bit. Called, oh, hello mate, yeah, it's all booked in for Saturday for you. What? So, really frustrating me, but it's fine. It's only a cow. Um, so, I did my first weekly call of the year this year. Four people turned up out of 40. Guess what the four people on that call are doing? Making loads of money. Um, the others that aren't, that weren't, don't. Um, some do. But yeah, uh, I kind of expected a low turn up rate, uh, but it was good. I asked them all what I could do better. And there wasn't that much. There was a few bits back that I will implement and fix, um, but nothing major. Um, so that's all good. So basically what we know now is that the program level one works. So now we need to get the six week program, the six week challenge working so that those guys in that six week period sell a deal so they can come into the program that we know works. Therefore, increasing the amount of people in the program, therefore increasing the likelihood that we're going to hit target month in, month out. I have set a target. So I'm just about to record a video uh, for YouTube, which is going to be our overview of 2023 and our plans for 2024. So I won't go into too much detail, but we have the report back. We raised we sold 5.4 million pounds worth of deals in 2023. 5.4 million. Mad numbers. That is a total of 410 units sourced and sold. So naturally, I'm looking at the 5.4 thinking, double it. We've got to go for the eight figure number. It's got to be done. See, what, I, what, what I've observed is that in the last six months of last year is when we made the most money. We made three million in three months at the end of the year last year. So that only leads a couple of million for nine months of the year. Yeah, for nine months of the year. And I'm, I know for a fact, January was about 100 grand because I remember shitting my pants. Um, so I think we probably made about four and a half million of that in the last six months of this year. Which isn't a million miles off of a million a month. So with more people joining the program, more people being aware of our deals, longer in the market having returned people the money that we promised, week, month in, month out, people getting what they bought, we should be able to do consistent seven figure months. Now, if we do 10 million in a year, we don't need to hit quite that number. So that allows us to have a shit December. It allows us to have a slow August or whenever everyone goes on holiday. It allows us a bit of leeway, but I think January is going to be shit as well. Um, but we've improved sales. We've improved process systems. We're bringing more people into the place. Like I say, all of this stuff leads me to think that 10 million is a possible figure. So can we sell 10 million quid's worth of deals? Do you want to be somebody who comes and helps us do your part of that 10 million? Because if we do 10 million, we would pay out half a million pounds in commissions. <laughs> Mad. And that was just a figure plucked out of my head off the top of my bonce because you get 5%. That is right, isn't it? Just crazy numbers. Um, it feels a little surreal. But we continue doing that. The other crazy thing is this is one product of ours. This year will be a year whereby our deal sourcing division really kicks up. So we'll be finding deals for investors to buy. Secondly, we will have a marketplace up and running on the Sporting Living Gateway, which will allow people to buy and sell already leased property deals. That will be huge. Let me tell you that straight away. That could be 10 million a year on its own. We will also pay our, our partners to just get landlords into the gateway who will then buy a deal on the uh, marketplace or get a property leased on there and get a chunk of the money there. Um, find us property deals that then get leased, 
get a third of the income on that property. The amount of money that can be made by partners is going to be ridiculous next year. I um, have a problem with jumping from thing to thing to thing. When the thing goes well, I jump to the next thing to do another thing just as good. There is no thing better than this partnership program. I've looked into crypto trading recently. I thought, why not? I've got a bit of spare time. No. Decision made, nah. The spare time goes into making this partnership program better, move forward quicker and getting it to its potential because the potential of this business is outrageous. I've got a book to write that I want to have written in the first six months of this year. That takes time. I will do my part of the book by interviewing people in the social and supported living space and extrapolating their stories, people who have been housed and people who are housing people. That will be my job. That takes time. I have to not only figure out who I want to interview, but then I have to do the interview, edit the interview, we'll upload that as a podcast. Like, it's crazy. It makes so much sense to me. All of a sudden, the reason I failed so often, the reason it's taken me 11 years to see any level of success that I deem to be success is because I expected the good things to continue without my full attention and was surprised when it didn't. And then I started a new business because it was exciting and fun and new things are cool. But what you need to realize when you're in a business that has potential, that there are more businesses within that business that you should focus on, not something new. So our Supported Living Gateway collaboration is huge. I don't have enough time on it because I've been busy doing other shit. The partnership program exists and that is the yoke. I really wanted to think of something cool then and I came up with yolk in the egg. But it kind of is. It's the lifeblood of the business. The better we train our partners, the more deals we sell, the more deals we bring in, the more landlords we put into the gateway, the more interested investors will buy on the marketplace, the more money every business makes. The partnership program is the sales hub of every single product we produce, including, funnily enough, the fucking partnership program. And we will pay the partners extremely well. We will make them the best version of themselves in any way possible. That being better at social media, better at public speaking, better at talking to people in a room, better at closing investors, everything. Because the better they are, the better we are. And I'm so glad I jumped on the camera now to talk to you about this because, again, like I say, I was, I'm like, oh, how about learning a new skill? Let's do crypto trading. No, because that's going to take over. I know I'm going to get some quick wins and then go, oh my God, crypto's the one. And then probably lose a load of money and then panic. And then it stresses me out. And then I don't do a video. And then I don't support the partners because I'm in stress. You know, the, I have to choose focus this year. And my focus is that my fitness and health and the partnership program being as good as it can be. I need to figure out a way in which I can remove social media really and truly from my account. I need somebody to, to be reading the messages, the DMs and all that stuff a lot more. Um, but yeah, I'm about to record a video and I'll check in with you later on. Oh, good morning gang, it's Sunday. We've woken up fresh yesterday, right? Yesterday. As you all know now, I am a non-drinker. I uh, identify as a non-drinker now. Um, 60 days with one pre-planned break on the 17th of February for a friend's birthday. Um, how is it going? It's actually quite tough. Um, yesterday, I was just in a really shitty mood. No reason why, particularly. Um, I just re and I, we went on a walk last night because we're, we're trying to do a lot more walk and we, me and the family hadn't done that much. We went swimming and stuff, but hadn't done that much walking. And it's, you know when it's dark, you're like, do I really want to go walking around in the dark? We did it anyway, and I'm glad we did. But we walked past three drinking establishments <laughs> en route and I was like, oh, get me a nice cold lager 
in my face. Um, but I went and got some non-alcoholics, had a couple of bottles, got bored of that, and that was it, done. Um, and I think that's what the, the non-alcoholic booze does for me. It kind of goes, I do like the taste of beer, but a couple's enough. Which is mad when you go out and you drink beer, beer, because you get pissed, you drink like eight pints of it. So I remember this from 75 Hard. When I did 75 Hard, I remember these like things being like, why do I do that? Why do I do that? Why do I do that? I went, I did mine in the summer, my 75 Hard. And I remember being at like a friend's cricket event and everyone was drinking jugs of beer. Um, and at the start, it was like absolutely fine, drinking some cans of non-alcoholic, blah, 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 feeling like I'm involved. And then it got to the like real drunk point where they're like slobbering in your ear, with, like <laughs> acting like idiots. And you're like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing when you're not also that person. <laughs> um, but all of my friends are doing dry jam this year. Um, so it's a lot nicer. So we'll see. I remember after 75 hard, I was like, look, I'm just gonna replace a normal beer with a non-alcoholic and I'm gonna make healthier choices with my drinking in terms of calories and stuff like that. And yeah, it just, just didn't happen. I love drinking beer, that's the problem. Um, but anyway, back to property stuff. So today, uh, I, uh, I was just about to say go to the gym. <laughs> Not property. Um, tomorrow, our first six week challenge officially starts and I am almost completely blind by the sun. Um, the six week challenge starts, I'm so excited. We've only run this six week challenge as a beta with people that had already done or were already in the program. So as much as we got good feedback, people did better than they did before and there were varying levels. So some people might have only been in there for a week and kind of came out. So we've had an element of understanding that the process worked, what's in there is enough to sell a deal. Um, we've added to it with the sales trainer, we've added to it with Harvey's um, 21 day uh, short form content challenge. Um, so we know it works. So I'm well excited. We've got, I think, 35, 40. I think we've got about 60 people um, with mine and Shelly's. Shelly has the majority of those. I've got 20. Shelly's got about 40 uh, females ready to start their journey, which is amazing. Um, so week one is pretty much just a background on, well, me, Kevin, the business, the background of the business, what we're doing moving forward and our goals to house a million. Um, the deals, really important part of the course is what the fuck are we selling? Um, what are they? How do they work? How do you get them? What's rent to rent? Oh shit, me, that is very, very flooded. Bloody hell. Um, yeah, so it's all giving the, the real backbone behind like the contracts even. What contracts do our investors get? What's the process? When an investor comes to me and they say, yes, I want a deal, what happens then? So we're trying to make sure all this stuff is really obvious, really easy, because I get asked the same questions time after time after time. No, more exciting stuff, and I know I ramble at you all when I'm in the car, but I had, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but I got told about this guy who does a lot with artificial intelligence, um, and he randomly came up on my Facebook with an ad about his free webinar, live training, um, that in fact is not live, <laughs> because you can basically click like eight times a day when you wanna watch it. So it's not live, but it doesn't matter. The information's the same. Um, so I went on that and it was brilliant. Um, and it basically spoke about something that we've been looking at doing as a business for a while, which is to automate, um, to have a WhatsApp automation, which is basically a funnel in WhatsApp, which is great for both client and me. Um, because I'm answering the same questions over and over again, because the deals are the same over and over again, the contracts are the same, the questions people have are the same naturally. Um, the odd one are different, but very rarely. Um, so we can set up automation whereby you click a button in my bio, for instance, and it will say, WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger? You click one of them, it's gonna take you to WhatsApp. 
and there's going to be a video of me going, hi, thank you for showing interest in our deals. Just want to give you a basic breakdown of all of the bits before you ask any questions. Here we go. There's a video. Then they'll be like, did you have any further questions? Yes, I did. What was it about? Contract, deal, blah, 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 blah. And then it'll be like, right. Um, and without it sounding like press one for blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a lot more interactive. It's a lot more based around keywords. So you could type in um, security on investment and it will come up being like, you've asked about the security on the investment. Here's, the, here's a voice note from me. So it's really interactive, really personable because I've recorded it all. And it just helps you get to the answers without having to go, right, let me book a call without even knowing the basics of this investment, which is gonna be nothing but helpful. Um, so we're gonna, I've got a call tomorrow for somebody who's gonna do that. We met them at the conference and uh, there's a company called ManyChat. For those of you watching this, go check ManyChat out because you can do a hell of a lot of automation for free. Uh, Liam tried this out and it's absolutely very much impressive. But I need to find out from this other company if they're doing anything different than ManyChat can't. I know, I remember off the top of my head them saying, basically they set it all up for you. You give them the information or you tell them what you want out of this flow and then they'll go, okay, cool, we're gonna set all of this up. I need a video saying this. I need a voice note saying this. I need this, 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 this. For all of the different businesses as well. Because rather than having like a link tree that goes and confuses the shit out of people, you have one link. And then when they click that one link, it goes to a messenger and then it says, just so you know, here are the options. Here's the things that we do in our business that I can help you with. Which one of these four is it? You click that button and then everything else is removed and you get a personal message from me. So really excited about getting that started. I think that will take a lot of our resource out and help our clients get a better, um, experience. I'm also looking at creating this bot for the partnership program because again my partners have the same questions for about the same stuff all of the time and as much as I answer them in the course people don't want to have to go hmm I wonder if that was covered in that video. Like me with Kevin whenever I need something I'm like blah, blah. so I want people to be able to do that. Message in the thing the bot goes cool here's the video or cool here's the answer. Um, so that'll be amazing. Again, I want to make sure it's in my voice. I want to make sure that it's like correct and right. But I think that bot could create instantaneous answers to the questions that people need. And therefore they get a better experience and they can do more quickly, quicker, quicker. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. Looking forward to that. Um, what else? Yeah, the weekly starts and then we're preparing all next week for the in-person event that we're doing really excited for that. I'm super, super excited just to see the difference between the guys that attended and the guys that didn't and see which ones sold deals and which ones didn't. Yeah, if it's if it's zero change, zero different, then we just won't do an in-person event again. There's no need, there's no point. I just can't see a world in which we don't push people in that room hard and quickly because they've got our support enough that it won't be the same. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be better results. Anyway, I'm going to the gym. I'll see you later. Alrighty gang. I've just been to the gym. So you're going to get the hyperactive version of the Wix. Um, it actually reminded me, nothing gym based. Don't worry. I'm not going to bore you with gym just constantly now because I'm such a gym guy. He doesn't even drink anymore. Um, but it was about a program I watched last night. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. It's a long series, but it's about a guy who basically the post office. He sued the post office. I don't know the ending yet. Um, but the, the learning that I took from it, right, is there's this guy, there's this whole new system that the post office has put in. Anyway, I don't want to ruin it for you, but basically he was hell bent on getting them to um, pay for their actions, basically. So he literally spent 12 years getting other people like him, um, getting evidence, finding solicitors, spending money, all of his energy and time for that 12 year period plus, I think it was more than that in the end, 
Um, I've not finished it, but all of that time, energy, emotion, stress, anxiety, frustration, over what? Something he felt obviously passionate about fixing, but what it taught me is, you know, we, we have problems all the time and we can deal and we have a choice in life as to how we deal with these things. I'm relatively selfish in a lot of ways when it comes to this stuff. I want to protect my mental, basically, because I have a lot of people that rely on me, not, not just like the immediate family um, and the wages that pay for our lifestyle and house and food and all that shit. But I have people that rely on me. I have my parents that are proud of me. I have the partners that look to me for solidarity, strength, um, mindset. Uh, hopefully a lot of you feel the same, right? And if I allow external people, external factors, external things to affect me day in, day out, then I wouldn't be that guy. Um, and, it, and I know it would eat me up and I would be sat there watching telly, feeling sorry for myself all of the fucking time. So I'm relatively selfish when it comes to emotions and that can be negative too. Um, you know, I basically like, I'm, I'm relatively emotionally void in a lot of ways. Um, anger tends to be my output rather than any other form of emotion really. I try, if I, if I feel like I'm getting upset about something, I will uh, more likely get angry about it than, than cry. Um, or avoid thinking about anything to do with it. Uh, I'm lucky enough that I haven't been through too many heartaches in terms of like deaths of close ones. There's been a few, nothing like super bad, touch wood, we've got a while. Um, but that's my coping mechanism. And I do that because it allows me to stay strong in, in my mind, in my head, and to keep doing what I do every day without feeling that horrible. I don't let, I hate the feeling of like that butterfly feeling. I, and I haven't had it majorly since when I lost that hundred grand, when I knew that house was going wrong, that feeling I never wanted to have again, that anger, upset, frustration, worry. I, I hated it and I didn't want that to ever happen again. So I try and avoid feeling like that. Um, and I think we all have a choice ultimately. This guy in the thing that I'm talking about spent the best part of 12, 15, I don't know how long it went, 20 years. And in the thing, his wife gets cancer and she's on her deathbed pretty much. And he's like, oh, I might just, I might just give it up. And she's like, you're not giving it up. I spent the last 15 years of our healthy lives of you fighting this thing. You best see it out. And I just thought that is so sad because for what? He's not doing it for the money. He's doing it because of this upset, this anger, this like emotional decision that that was unfair therefore I'm going to do something about it but someone my, my my other side to that coin is that someone's got to do it someone has to be that person someone has to be the martyr somebody has to give up their life to fix things that are wrong in the world for me I'm not that guy um there may be many out there that think I'm selfish for that but I my life I will spend solely focused on making sure that me, my wife, my two kids, my brother and his family, my mum and my dad, and that they are happy, fulfilled, and that we have an amazing life. It's selfish, I know, but that's how, that's how I want my life to be. I want my life to be everything. When I, get, when I lie down on my deathbed, I want to go, fuck, we had a life. If I died tomorrow, I know I could say that. I'd probably have a few things I wish I'd have done and maybe I could have and should have and whatever else, but actually not really. I make sure I spend time with my parents because I know that their time on this earth is a lot more limited than, than maybe I'd like. Um, 
and I think that's important and, and I don't think I could do any more than that really. Um, so I just want you to really take a, take a lesson from that too. When, when, you, when you start going, oh, that guy owes me a hundred quid. Oh, I'm going to make sure he fucking pays. Oh my God, I'm going to go into his house. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend all this time making sure that his life's a living hell. Blah, blah, blah. Waste of life. Straight up. You are wasting your life worrying about that shit. For the sake of a hundred quid, if someone's going to knock you for a hundred quid or a thousand quid, then there's something seriously wrong with them. And I would say that the universe, if you deal with it in the correct way, the universe will pay you back and the universe will pay them back equally on the other way. Um, I've let so many things go. I've let so many people go with my money. Um, I've paid money to settle stuff even though I knew I shouldn't have just because I wanted that freedom of mindset. I didn't want that thing in the back of my mind going, I'm still having to deal with that. Still having to deal with that. That money still needs to be dealt with. That thing needs to be dealt with. I need to get that money from that guy. I shouldn't be paying this money to that guy. Pay it. Get rid of that stress out of your life in whatever way you possibly can because you will spend six months being, st being stressed, upset with your family. It's going to have a knock-on effect there. It's also going to mean that you're not gonna be at your best with what you're supposed to be doing in your life. The purpose you have in your life, the business you're trying to build, you can't focus on your business if you're worried about debts and trying to make other people pay and revenge and all this other shit. Let all that stuff go and live your life in the best way you possibly can because it is short. And you'll find that when you have kids because it goes even quicker. Um, but yeah, I thought it was quite uh, profound. Um, program that I don't know whether many else picked up on that but I just thought you poor bastard working for the post office in the first place having to like not earn that much money and then getting stitched up and then feeling like your only way out is to spend the rest of your living life with your loved ones telling them about how you're going to get your own back and then they die it's just not it that's just not it let things go when you know you have the ability, if, it, if it's just money and you know you can make money because your business is going to be great, then fucking just let it go and go and make money elsewhere. Go and make money yourself and go and even reach out to that person and go, look, I know we had our differences. You owed me money. I stopped chasing you for it. I hope you're doing better now. Because anyone that nicks money, anyone that does people over in that way. There's something else going on in their head. It's not just because they want more money. It's because they're sad. It's because they've got maybe a drug problem, an alcohol problem, that they need the money more than you. So consider it charity in some ways. But anyway, it was quite a long video for, for that, nearly 10 minutes, but just think about these things.